So to start off with, we're just going to work on the background. <clears throat> and I want a nice gradient of light blue to dark blue. So I'm using phthalo blue, ivory black, and titanium white. But you can use whatever blue you have on hand. And since this is a small rock and a small surface, you can blend these colors pretty easy. If you were using a much bigger canvas, you know, you would need to work fast or use like an airbrush, uh, an airbrush gun full of water to mist your canvas. That That's the way when I'm using, working on a big canvas and I need a smooth gradient background, I'll mist it with with airbrush wa with water in an airbrush gun because it puts very small particles on a water where like using a spray bottle won't work and the water drops are way too big anyway that's off off topic so you want the gradient to be kind of a U shape especially down at the bottom and you can kind of see there I'm working on kind of rounding that up into a, a U shape I'm using a pretty small brush. That right there was a, a makeup brush to kind of help with getting rid of some of the brush strokes. The makeup brush will help get rid of brush strokes. Um, but you can also buy, they make a paint brush. It's called a mop brush. It's the same thing. I like makeup brushes for that because they don't shed as bad as a paint brush. I don't know why paintbrush companies haven't developed the same technique as makeup brushes in the fact that makeup brushes don't usually shed. They're, for some reason, a better quality. So it takes a couple of layers to get the background uh, in the gradient, smooth gradient that I needed. Sorry, I just hit my microphone. And, of course, Harley's going to start talking. Hopefully she'll lose interest here in a, in a minute and go back to playing. So I'm just lightening up the top, just making sure that I've got a good gradient. Once you get the background done, you want to make sure that your rock is completely dry before you go any further. You can either let it dry or you can use a blow dryer to dry it. If you do use a blow dryer, I recommend letting it cool down. Because you want to use a, a, a warm or hot setting. Uh, and then let the rock cool down. Otherwise your paints are going to dry really fast. Because my rock is wet, I can go in and use, um, oh, I guess my, I guess I didn't dry. It doesn't need to be dry for this part. I was thinking we were going, I forgot about this step. So this, I'm creating the ripples of the water. So you, I want it to look like you're underneath the water looking up at the surface. So these are the ripples that would be at the top of the water. And I'm yet just using titanium white for this. And then we'll glaze some blue over it uh, to darken the ripples that would be in the background. Now I'm taking a, a little bit, my liner brush, and a little bit of a darker blue just to create kind of a shadow between the ripples. I'm just doing this on a couple. You don't have to do it on every single one. And I'm even adding some darker ripples there in the background. So now I'm taking the blue and I made a glaze out of it. 
and then I'm just going to paint over that. Now I'm taking titanium white and I'm going to go over that again. And this is just in areas, I'm just hitting some of the ripples like right in the center of them. And that's just going to kind of create a highlight on some of those ripples so that they kind of sparkle. Then I'm going to go over, after this is all done, I'm going to go over just the middle and I'm going to glaze some white just in the middle to create kind of a sun spot. It already looks like it's there because of my lighting is creating a, a white spot. That's pretty much what we want uh, with what we're going to do with the paint here in a little bit. So now I'm taking the bottom of my rock is dry and I'm working on the like the live rock, the coral rock at the bottom. And I'm using just a little bit lighter blue than the background and I'm dotting on just random shapes and it not like polka dots, but like overlapping dots to achieve uh, this coral effect. It's just a, a bunch of, again, just a bunch of random overlapping dots. And you want it very subtle. So you want the color to be just a shade lighter than what your background is. And for the far background, you're going to mute it down even more to where it, it, it's really very close to what the background color is. That's how you create the depth in the design. And I want all of this to look like it's back behind the fish, not underneath the fish. So I'm going to use kind of this muted blue color. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to get just a shade darker than the background. And I'm going to go in and shadow areas of this coral. But I'm not going to highlight it. So I'm, not, I'm only going to be using two colors instead of three. I'm not going to highlight it. If I highlighted it, it would pull it forward and it would make it look more like it was underneath the fish. So by using the three colors or the two colors, in my, in my case it'll be two colors, that's what gives all of this stuff depth and dimension as opposed to just doing it in the one color, the, the original first color, that's going to make it look kind of flat. So see here is where I'm going in and adding in the shadow. And it's just a, a deeper gray. You know, it's not like black or anything like that. It's not that intense. You still want it to look very muted and kind of in the distance underwater. And if you feel like you went too heavy with the, sh the shading, then you can go back in and kind of with your original color and just pull some more of those, that coral back out. You just kind of keep going back and forth with the colors until you're happy with the way it looks. Now I'm going back with a darker color again, just here in the front. And these multiple layers of different colors is what creates the dimension, the depth and dimension. So now I'm mixing up some of that white and you see I'm going to glaze it right through the middle to create that kind of sunspot in the ripples. And 
and I'm using a number six round blender brush. Now I'm gonna create some like sun rays and I do this by having very little paint on my paintbrush. So it's, it's almost like dry brushing, but these rocks are so smooth. It just kind of barely puts those little sun rays. It works really well. And again, this is a number six Princeton Select round blender brush. It's linked below in the description. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I put in these sun rays not knowing whether or not you would be able to see them. I wanted them in there just in case you could see them. The fish pretty much covers most of it up. So now I've already traced out my design on the tracing paper. And then I'm gonna use transfer paper to transfer it onto my rock. And you wanna tape in the top two corners so that your your paper doesn't shift because we are especially because we're on a rounded rock it'd be really easy for it to shift and it's hard for me to see where the rock is so I'm having to kind of do it all by feel to make sure that my fish is kind of centrally located in my rock now I have coral drawn, drawn on my tracing paper, but we're just going to ignore that. I I decided to just go ahead and hand paint that all in. I didn't need a design. Now I'm using I'm using the Sorrel transfer paper. That's the one I like. I get it off of Amazon. It's also linked below, and I'm using just a nail dotting tool as kind of a stylus. This helps keep my original design very clean because I'm not using a pencil to go over it, which kind of messes up your original design. So if I need to, for some reason, lay this back on my rock to check my design or do so, uh, a lot of times I'll just outline and then go back with the center part of the design. It just helps keep it all very clean. So put it back on my turntable, which I'm in love with. Now I'm taking water and I'm just cleaning some of the transfer, uh, that white transfer. Uh, I don't know, it's not ink, but whatever it is, I'm just cleaning it off. It comes, it cleans up real easy with just water. The pressure of my hand on the rock will sometimes transfer that. Uh, the material transfer the transfer the white onto the I don't know what that is I don't it's not an ink it's like a powdery a waxy powdery substance that that will transfer under the pressure of my hands so I'm just cleaning that up so these these fish are orange and white but very little of our fish is actually going to have white in it so a lot of it is going to be purples and blues for the for the white section because remember white is very translucent so you're nothing's ever really just truly white except for your highlights and the white in a the spark in an eye the reflection in an eye is is white but rarely will you have just true straight white on your subject matter. If you do that, then you're, it's really gonna look flat. So by adding dimension, you add color to add dimension. Harley, that's enough of that, please. And I'm using dioxazine purple. You could use a violet or whatever color uh, or blues. You wanted to just use blues for the white. And 
And then I'm using orange, uh, but you could just use a mixture of red and yellow. That you know that makes a beautiful orange. Harley, that's enough. That's way too much. So now I, you notice I didn't paint my stripes, my orange stripes, white first. And that's okay because in my reference photo, the orange is kind of muddied. So orange and blue are complementary colors, meaning that if you mix those two together, they're going to turn muddy like a brown. So going, taking this orange and going over the blue, because it's kind of a translucent paint, it will muddy the color up a little bit. And I'm okay with that, but if you want yours to be kind of a brighter orange, paint the stripe white first and then go over it with the orange. Sorry, I just hit my microphone. So now we're just working on the eye. And they have a pretty simple, there's not just a whole lot of detail in their eyes. Harley. It's way too early for all this racket. April. <laughs> Don't April me. Now, if you paint rocks for a living, or if you paint rocks, a lot of rocks, getting one of these little turntables, they, I would, they're, it, it's been like a godsend for me. I just love it. Now, mine is not, I don't link mine below because mine is not the best quality. I think it was like the cheapest one on Amazon. It was like $5. And it does not spin smooth. Like if you were to just free spin it, it's going to hop around. But for painting rocks, it works great. But it's definitely not smooth. And I'm using my Holotap. I think for this project, I only used the Holotap triple lot, which is three zeros, or the double lot, which is two zeros. Um, I bought this set off of Amazon that is linked below. And I've been using these same paintbrushes for a long time. But I keep my paintbrushes clean. You see that as I paint, when I'm done with that paintbrush, I rinse it out and I lay it down. I never leave my paintbrushes in my water well because that is the quickest way to damage. Next to just leaving paint in the paintbrush uh, and not rinsing it, that will that'll destroy them quicker than anything because acrylic paint dries so fast. But the second way is by leaving the paintbrush in the water. That's really bad because there's glue in the barrel and that's what helps hold all those paint, the bristles all in there and keeps the barrel attached to the wood handle. If you leave them soaking in water for any length of time, it soaks up water into that glued area and eventually your paintbrush is going to fall apart. So each orange stripe has a black outline and each white stripe has a really bright white outline. So 
So you need, you definitely need a liner brush when doing a subject this small. Now I came up with the concept of this rock. A lot of times when I paint as like if I was looking for this fish, I would just paint the reference photo that I found, the background and the fish, everything that was in that reference photo. But in this one, I wanted the reef at the bottom and then the ripples at the top. So I went on Pixabay, which are free reference photos for artists and or for any kind of media that you're using. But a lot of artists use that website for free reference photos. Um, they're free to use and they're also uh, royalty free, meaning you, there's no copyright laws with those photos. Um, but back to my original thought is that I found one on Pixabay that was just an underground uh, not underground, underwater scene. I found that and I loaded that into Photoshop and then I went and found this fish, which it said it was a copper banded butterfly fish. I could be completely wrong. I'm just going by what the description said. So I found this fish, loaded it into Photoshop and kind of married the two images together. So this is kind of a concept, my own concept. Harley. It's too loud. If you're ever interested in knowing how I come up with some of my designs, let me know and I will make it a point to do a video on how I kind of find my reference photos and how I layer them and how I come up with. I've got some more paintings kind of like this. I have one that I think that'll be of dolphins. Um, I have a landscape that was a concept design. If you're interested in, in learning how to do that. That was one of the toughest things when I started painting um, was learning how to come up with my own design, coming up with something completely different and new, something that isn't just a reference photo out there. Okay. And it's something I'm still kind of learning today. And the next couple of designs are going to be a little bit more advanced. Which the, the cartoon rocks are a lot of fun to do. But if you really want to learn how to paint in a realistic style, you have to challenge yourself. You have to keep like going for and attempting the harder designs. That's the only way you're going to grow as an artist. And by challenging yourself, you're, you'll be surprised. You're going to have some rocks that are kind of a complete failure in the beginning. Expect it and be okay with it because that's all the learning process. Because even though it may not turn out perfect, you're still going to learn a lot by challenging yourself. And if you keep doing that, you're going to grow as an artist and your abilities are going to grow. A lot faster and you're going to be really surprised in just a couple months time how much better your your abilities are going to be from you know day one to three months down the road and just remember that nobody sits down at a rock or an easel and paints a masterpiece that is perfect this is just like any other skill, you know, like learning how to play. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I still have a little bit of a cough. Um, 
it's it's just like learning any other skill, like sitting the learning the piano or learning the guitar, um, or a sport or anything. It's practice. You have to practice, practice, practice. Just paint, 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 and be okay with. I'm gonna say failing, but you're not really failing. It it just not be maybe as good as you want it to be. But the fact that you're challenging yourself means you're not failing. It means you're learning. And I'm I've been painting for years and I still this is the first time the past year is the first time that I have painted solid every day almost. And my my skill level has improved. I've painted for about 20 years, but this is the first time I've like literally taken it to this level and I'm seeing improvement. So you know, don't get discouraged, just keep painting. And just have faith that if you keep practicing and keep trying to push yourself, you are going to improve. There's just no way around it. You're going to get better. Because one of the things as a new artist, um, when when we first start painting, is we look at, like in this case, we look at this fish as a fish. And we miss a lot of the detail. And you're going to see that I'm going to actually do it here. And it's going to be a prime example of what I'm talking about. Do you see how the white, the the orange at the top of this fish cuts off the white? You know, and it kind of encloses the white at the top. That's a mistake. The original reference photo, that white goes all the way over the fish. It goes all the way to the top. And... We make this mistake where we go, okay, I know what this looks like because I've seen the picture, so I'm just going to start painting and I'm going to stop paying attention to the reference photo. And that's mistake number one. Number two is looking at it as a whole. When you're painting, you paint in sections, like I'm painting in these stripes. You only need to focus on the stripe not the whole fish, and you need to check your reference photo constantly. And you're going to look at it as not a fish, but as an abstract stripe. That's all you want to focus on is that one section that you're painting. And that becomes abstract shapes. Well, we can all paint abstract shapes. We may not all be able to paint a fish, but if you can paint the abstract shape, then eventually that all those abstract shapes that you paint are going to become a fish. And that also, by breaking it down into these small sections, you're going to see a lot more of the detail that's in the fish. Because a lot of times... Like when I first started painting, I would look at other people's paintings and I would be like, how do they see that? How do they even notice all this small detail? And, <coughs> excuse me, the clicking is me cutting the microphone off so I can cough. Um, the, the more you paint and the more you break it down into small sections, you're going to start noticing that small detail. Now I'm painting in kind of the scales of the fish. They kind of go in these lines and it's going to look ugly here for a few minutes. So just bear with this. And that's the other thing. When you first start painting your fish, you go through or, or your subject when you're just getting in your base layers in, it looks ugly. And sometimes you get, you look at it and you go, where am I going to go with this? Just keep adding layers. That's the one thing that's great about acrylic paint is that you never max out on the number of layers that you can paint. 
So if you don't like the way it looks, keep going. A lot of times beginning beginner artists will just quit too soon. And they'll get it they'll get it kind of blocked in. They may add a little bit of detail because they're looking at it as a fish and not as little sections of abstract shapes. And they they'll look at it and they'll go, "Well, it's a fish." But it doesn't look very good and they'll quit and what they really need to do is is keep going you want to keep adding layers and when you layer like I do with thin layers these thin glazing layers the way the light ref refracts and reflects through those layers of paint help create dimension and depth in your painting So you see, as I go, I'm painting in sections, and that's what I'm doing. But even I will get comfortable, and like I've seen the reference photo, I know what this fish looks like, and I'll stop paying attention to the reference photo. Plus, I have, in in my defense, I guess, in my defense, I have to bang out these rocks. I, I am committed to doing three a week, plus I have to do all the research for the the concept, I have to paint it, and then I have to do all the editing. The editing takes hours and hours. So, and then the downloading of all of this up to you, or the uploading up to YouTube, um, also, like, can take a whole day. So I have to take, I have to stay on schedule in order to meet my commitments, my scheduling commitments. So sometimes I will... Like, I just need to get this rock done, and I will rush through the design. And when I do that, that's when I start making mistakes, like I did here, where the white should not be trapped in by the, the orange. Now, I do realize this later on. I start looking at it, and I'm like, why does this look off? It just looked off to me. That's when you start looking at the reference photo and breaking it down and going where where is my design off from the original reference photo and then as you get better you can you'll start taking kind of artistic liberties and you know ratcheting up your saturation and um, like I'm using uh, magenta to shade my orange that may not be the actual color that's on the reference photo but it's a color combination that I like and I find striking so I use that a lot and then using purple to um, as the shadow color for for white as opposed to using like a gray that's kind of an artistic uh, liberty that I like to take now in my original reference photo there was a lot of purple so it was good on this case but say you're painting a black dog and he's got a lot of shine to his coat instead of using white as the shine I use blue because the blue actually makes it look shiny where white makes them look old and dusty so those are those little artistic licensing liberties that you you will learn especially watching videos that's one of the things that when I started there weren't YouTube wasn't around and you kind of just learn these things by looking at other artists' work and kind of figuring out how they did things so that you can improve your own work. But by having these tutorials, y'all get to learn so much faster. And so you, you'll improve as an artist way faster than I ever did. 
and I still watch other artists paint. I actually like just watching people paint, whether I don't care whether they're outstanding artists or not, or a new artist. I just love watching the process. So I watch a lot of people on YouTube just paint. And if I don't necessarily agree with what they're saying, sometimes I just turn the volume down. I know sometimes YouTube uh, artist videos can be kind of boring because we're just talking about painting. There's you can't implement a lot of humor into this tutorial, so they can get kind of kind of dull. And if that's the case, just mute me and <laughs> just watch the, you can learn a lot just by watching. Now I'm outlining the white sections have a white, like a bright white line outline. Oops, sorry. And then the, I hit the microphone again. And then the orange has a kind of a black outline. On the white sections, I do draw it in white, but I'm going to glaze it with blue. I'm going to go over it with that blue and glaze that white. So I, I'm not going to leave it white like it is. I'm going to glaze over it. Which actually looks a lot better than just leaving it white. The white looks flat. Once you glaze over it with the blue, it it stands out more and it, it has more dimension to it. Now my reference photo, this guy's tail was dark, but in some of the other reference photos that I looked at, their tail is almost clear. And I'm not sure why his tail was dark. But it was kind of weird. A lot of them had kind of looked like you could see through the tail. So I glazed over, I painted his tail that darker blue, and then I glazed that white over it because I'm going to go over that with orange. And I needed to add that white in order for the orange to stand out. And when you're dealing with these complementary colors, um, and if you don't know what all that means, download a color wheel off the internet. You can get it for free off the internet. And study those color wheels. So you're, you've got your primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow. And then you have your secondary colors, which are the colors that those make. So red and yellow make orange. Red and blue make purple and blue and yellow make green, those, what would that be, orange, purple, and green are your secondary colors. And then when you start mixing those colors together, that's where, that's where your color mixing kind of comes in. I think those are your tertiary colors. Um, and then they go on beyond that, and I don't remember what those all are. But the colors that are complementary are the ones across each other from the color wheel. So orange is across from blue, yellow is across from purple, and red is across from green. And those are called complementary colors. And your complementary colors, when blended together, will make brown. And so each one's gonna make a different shade of brown, but they all make brown. And that's why they say that they will muddy up. So if you ever have like, 
a yellow and you want to neutralize it, you don't want it so bright and you want to kind of neutralize it a little bit, add a little bit of purple to it. Not a lot, but a little bit of purple will kind of dial down the brightness. You add a lot of purple to it, you're going to end up with a muddy brown. And some of them, uh, we call it mud, muddy, not the color, but like red and green, depending on the, the red and the green that you use, sometimes for me make a really pretty brown. So now I'm glazing over, remember I told you I had those, the scales kind of lined in? You're going to see where I'm going to start glazing over to kind of, that's going to dial down those stripes. They're, you're going to be able to see them, but they're not going to stand out nearly as well. Now here I'm glazing over uh, some magenta and purples. I did magenta in the, in the orange and I'm doing purple in the white sections. But now because my background is blue, we need to pull in some of that blue into the subject matter so that our design is cohesive, so that our fish, you know, fits in well with the background. And in order to do this, I will glaze in some darker blue into the bottom part of his body. That'll be the sh shadowed part of his body that's in shadow. I will do that in, in a darker blue. And that's what's going to help tie this design all together. So see, I'm just making sure that all of my white lines are bold enough. And then once they dry, then I'm going to glaze over them with some blue. And I've said it before. You know, I'm painting on a three inch rock. If you were to go really big with this, a lot of people, when you start out, you think I'll paint small because it'll be easier. It's actually easier if you were to take this fish and put him on like an 11 by one of those 11 by 14 or 14 by 17 and blew him up. It would actually be easier to paint. It must be a lot, a lot of fun to paint that. When you blow up something small and you blow it up really big and you can really paint in the details and stuff, it's a lot easier and it, it looks really cool. So see, I'm still working on those lines, which would be like the scale lines. We see how it looks kind of funny here. That's why we're just going to keep glazing color over that to dial it down to where it's just a hint. See right here, this is where I'm painting it in. And I'm going over it with kind of a lavender. And honestly, when you add white to a color... You can't really cause it a gl call it a glaze anymore, but I've added a lot of water to where it makes it. It's still translucent. But I just want those scales. I just want a subtle hint of scales, but I got to put them in and make them dark so that you can see them through these, these glazes. Yeah, 
is what I'd call the, the ugly layers that you've heard me talk about. I'm just shading the bottom part of his body and kind of the top part where it, now this is where I'm kind of going off on my own and not even paying attention to the reference photo. And this is where I'm kind of going off the rails here. I'm just trying to get the rock done and I'm just kind of rushing through it and I've stopped paying attention to the reference photo and that that's a big mistake. That's kind of like a rookie mistake. If you want to paint realistic, you've got to keep paying attention to your reference photo. And you need to paint with a, from a reference photo, not from your memory. Unless you've painted that subject, you know... A hundred and some hundreds of times you need a reference photo. Now see I've signed it and I'm at a point where I just need to be done with this rock. And it looks good. <clears throat> now, here's a another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. Th this isn't on the reference photo, but this is something I like to do in painting fish. And that's adding little dots to the fins and around the fish's body. And that kind of adds a spark where the light is kind of hitting those little fins because the fins are real thin and they reflect the light. So that's just, that's a artistic liberty that I'm taking and adding that in. It's not in the reference photo, but it's something that I like to add. And then I decided that I wanted to add some bubbles. And I do this by making like an upside down face and then blending that line towards the middle. You don't want it solid because you still want to be able to see through the bubble, but you do want to to kind of blend in that the bottom half of that line. And then you add white like a white smile at the bottom and then it's just a dot a white dot in the black area And there you've got your your little dot, your uh, water bubbles. So now this is a little bit later in the day, after I've looked at my fish and realized that there were some things that I needed to. I needed to shade him more on the bottom and incorporate more of the blue so he ties into the background better. And then I the I thought that the scale lines were still just a little bit too pronounced. So I'm kind of dialing those down. I'm kind of glazing some very light lavender over those lines. And it's kind of hard to see. You can still see them, but it's hard to see 
in the video. And I'm just taking a damp brush and going over that blue, the kind of the edge of that blue to blend that out. There actually isn't paint or there wasn't paint on that brush when I was blending it. There's paint on it now. Here I'm glazing the blue over the white lines. I'm brightening up his top because he should be brighter at the top because the sun is shining in from the top of the water. So remember, I had shaded him originally and realized, well, that's not right. We need to, he needs to be brighter at the top. But see how I'm still not taking it all the way to the top of the fish? It's like I'm paying attention to the reference photo, but I'm not really looking at it closely at where my rock doesn't match it. Now I've taken my orange and added some yellow to it because I want to brighten up these back fins and some of the striping. I want it to be just a little bit brighter. Now this isn't true to the reference photo. This is more true to some of the other photos that I saw of these. Um, but that's okay. That This is just... I decided I wanted him to look a little bit brighter. In the reference photo, he may have been in deeper waters. Here he's in shallower waters, so the sun's going to be hitting him more. So, I, you know, you have to kind of take into consideration when you do a concept design like I've done that you may have to tweak some of the your coloring and your, your highlighting. And in my original, my reference photo, that little fin on his side um, was really just a, a light burst. I guess the light was hitting it so strong, it just looks like a light burst. So I had to kind of guess at the way his fin should look. Now I looked at some other reference photos to kind of help, but on, on my original reference photo, you couldn't really make out the detail of the fin at all just a little light burst so now I've come back later I've cleaned my palette I've taken a break from the rock and <clears throat> this is where I'm going to realize or I have realized that the top of the fish is not correct I also wanted to clean up this back stripe. I didn't like the way it looked, so I'm just I'm just kind of cleaning it up.
And I'm going to lighten up the edges of these fins just a little bit more. And I dab it with my finger because that helps blend it. And the more I layer on, the brighter it's going to look. Because remember, I'm, I never put white underneath as the original base coat. So I'm fighting with the muddy orange. But if you layer on enough and add white to it, you will eventually get it to where you want it. It's just, it'll be more work than if you would have just put white, your original layer was white. Now see there, I took another paintbrush that's just barely damp, and that is another way to blend. You just hit the edge where the two colors meet, where the wet paint and the dry paint meet. You just hit that edge and it'll blur it out. And it's a, another way to blend your, your paints, your layers. I don't do that a whole lot. I may try to work, do a project where I do some more blending like that for anybody. If you're interested in learning how to blend that way, I'll try to do a project where I use that technique more. These rocks are so small. You don't really have to blend that way very often. If you're painting bigger, that's a great way to blend. By having just a damp brush. See, there's a, I'm doing it there. The damp brush and I'm hitting just the edge, edges to blend them out. The key there is to kind of stay away from the middle. Because you'll push the paint to the edges. The middle of the paint to the edges if you're not careful. Now I lightened up the belly so that I could darken it again. Uh, and that's to clean it up a little bit, to, to clean up the color. Because sometimes when you start layering different colors on, sometimes it'll Again, muddy it up a little bit. So if you want to clean it up, just turn it white and repaint it. And I've lost some of my white lines here, so I'm going to go in and repaint those. And again, I'm going to glaze over those in blue. And see here I am pulling that white stripe all the way up to the top of the fin, which is <laughs> more like my reference photo. And it's going to make this fish look a lot better. And honestly, if I had just kind of slowed down and not rushed through here, I got, you know, getting panicky and hoping that I can get this rock and some other rocks done. I end up costing myself time by rushing through it and not paying attention to my reference photo, where if I would have paid attention to it, this rock wouldn't have taken me so long.
Now I am adding orange back to, to the top, which is the way my reference photo looks. But I don't have that dividing line. It's just just a hint of orange up there. If you have anything that you would like to see me paint, let me know and I will make it a priority. Otherwise I have to come up with my own designs <laughs> on what to paint. Sometimes it's easier if y'all let me know what you want me to paint, then I don't have to come up with the idea. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me. I will see you in the next video.